Hello, this is Angela with Parkos Permaculture. It's a really lovely evening here in Portland, Oregon, and so folks are out mowing and kids are out playing in the neighborhood, and that's the reality of living in a city, but we're gonna knock out a video anyway. So I'm down in the backyard of my permaculture garden. This is my golden raspberry row here. This is my hedge row in progress here along the fence with my neighbor. And today I wanna to talk about a really quick tip that I have been implementing with my blueberries. Now I did a video last year about how I moved some mature blueberries and I was like, this is great, they're gonna do great. And in a normal year they would, oh, I'm losing my balance a little bit here. In a normal year they would do great, but we had an unprecedented heat dome and 115 degree temperatures in June. And that was a bad, bad scene. It normally is cool and rainy, like 60 and rainy. And so some of my blueberries really struggled. So this behind me is a mature blueberry and I had to prune back massive parts of it over the winter that got heat damage, sunburn, because we're in a drought and mostly because we had this ridiculous heat wave. So I'm trying to think about all these strategies for helping my plants be more successful as we're facing a warming climate and we're facing some less um, confidence in our water levels and our uh, precipitation here in the Pacific Northwest. Now, years and years and years ago, I visited Bosque Dell Natives Nursery with my mother. And if you have not been there, I would love to go do a tour and film there because it's just such a fun place to go. They have all kinds of natives if you're thinking about becoming a certified wildlife habitat and you want to include much more natives in your garden, Bosque Dell is the place to go. So when I was at Bosque Dell, I bought some red huckleberries because I'm a sucker for huckleberries and sometimes I just want them out of my yard and I don't wanna to have to go forage for them in the Tillamook Forest. Now they encouraged me that, you know, it can be really difficult to grow huckleberries in a home garden. That's why people forage them. But there are some tips for success. And when I bought my huckleberry, I noticed that in the pot, there was a big pithy, um, rotten, super rotten chunk of wood in the pot. And I asked at the checkout, like, what is your strategy? What's your thinking here? Well, in the forest, a red huckleberry, which is the genus Vaccinium, same genus as our blueberries here, it grows, red huckleberry likes to grow on or really close to in close proximity to rotting logs. So why not recreate the circumstances under which red huckleberry thrives and is really, really happy? And then you're much more likely to have success, right? That's so much of what permaculture design is how can we replicate the things in nature that work really well? How can we work with the evolutionary process? How can we work with the natural tendencies of plants and create a system that thrives and is more abundant and reduces the workload for us as people? So I took my red huckleberries home and not only did I use those little chunks of rotten wood that were in the pot, I got a lot more really rotten logs from a plum tree we'd had removed when we first bought the house and I buried them in the ground. And guess what? I have successful red huckleberries here in my home garden. So I thought these, these blueberries are struggling. What are the benefits that those uh, logs provided to the huckleberry? It mimicked circumstances in which huckleberries grew in the wild. A really uh, rotten, uh, soft spongy log literally works as a sponge. If you've ever had those chunks of pithy wood, if you've gotten free firewood on Craigslist or taken down a diseased tree in your garden, they have so much airspace in them that just sucks up water and acts like a sponge. Much like folks who use a clay oya in their garden and fill it with water and let the water slowly disperse into the garden and water your plant, that is the role of a large log that is really rotten and, and able to soak up all of the rainwater. It's a sponge that then slowly releases the moisture back into the ground. And like a hugel bed, that rotten log, as it decomposes, enriches the soil at the same time. So I'm getting kind of a triple whammy here. I'm getting a replicating circumstances under which these plants thrive in nature. I am adding a slow watering system and reducing water loss for the plant and I am adding fertility over time as the log decomposes. So that's what I've decided to do here for my blueberry. So let me flip the camera around and show you. All right, so here is my poor blueberry, still living, but I had to take out the entire middle of it due to our freak weather, which basically sunburnt the entire plant and I should have covered it because it was newly transplanted, but there was a lot going on in my life. And you know what? There's grace and forgiveness as a gardener. This plant is still hanging on and look down here new buds. She's going to come back and thrive. Let me come around over here. So she's going to come back. All kinds of new growth on this. So here this is the big logs that I put in. They're 
really rotten and pithy, just like a crumbly wet sponge, see? Rapidly becoming soil. I buried a big one here. And this is, this is probably, this log is probably as deep as it is wide. I dug a big hole and then there's one over here. And then I'm about to come in and put in more wood chips. My hope is that these crumbly logs will help hold moisture in. They'll really help my blueberry get a leg up at recovery. So they're sort of nurse logs. So my hope is that these big old honkin' logs, all rotten, they're not going to waste. They're adding a benefit in my garden. They're helping support my blueberry as she kind of rehabs from this really, really significant stress that she faced last year. So my hope is that these logs will serve a purpose, give her the little extra boost that she needs to recover and continue to thrive. She is a 10, 11 year old blueberry. And so I don't want to lose her. And I'm hoping this is a way that we can help her succeed in the garden here. Folks might ask me if I'm worried about slugs, not in this particular area. I'm sure slugs and centipedes and all kinds of good things are living in here, but there's nothing in this part of the garden that is at risk from slugs. So thanks for watching today. I'm gonna to get back to gardening. I hope that you are enjoying spring in your garden. I hope that these videos are helpful for you. I want to continue to talk more and more about what has been effective for me in more than 20 years in permaculture so that I can share my mistakes, my experiences, what has worked well for me and what has been an utter failure and a really hard lesson to learn so that you don't have to um, go through the same kind of stumbling steps that I have, that you can have success from the get-go. So thanks for watching. Check out my Patreon down in the description and I'll be back.